may be new. So just for, if you've tried it before, just for a quick review and for the benefit of those who are new, watercolor is one of, it's a very transparent medium. So supplies matter. Um, you need to get a particular kind, for the style that I teach, which is wet on wet style, we need a particular kind of watercolor paper. And that is something, this is an important number, 140 pounds or 300 G, uh, GSM, whatever G means. But it, all it means, it's, it's a very thick kind of paper. Hear that? So this is, you can't, if you can't get, uh, don't take watercolor paper that doesn't do this. So, and then, um, the brushes also will matter. They have to be a certain softness. They are very different from oil or acrylic painting brushes. So anything that feels almost like a makeup brush, that's likely to be a watercolor brush. So look at this. So this is something that you could like imagine using on makeup. And some of them, these are, these are like, uh, sort of a little stiffer, but they're not as stiff as oil painting brushes. The next thing that's important, of course, is your paints, uh, well, palettes. So you've got the typical palette has wells because watercolor is liquidy. So you're going to um, mix a lot of liquidy. So the wells are nice, but you can also, you do not have to rinse out your palette every time you can let the water dry uh, you can let you can let the paint dry because watercolor reactivates so you don't lose your paint so i will be using this dry paint later on see it never really dries up completely either um, in in our painting so that's nice so in a sense you don't you know you save a lot of paint so here is a set that i use this is a very cheap brand 450 um, because you can go to town spending a lot of money on supplies and there are professional brands that I really recommend. However, for the beginner, this is one of those beginner student brands that actually do nicely because it produced something like this. So these are, when you learn good technique, these are the kinds of things you can do with watercolor. So just to get us started, I have my paper. Um, another useful supply to have, if you have it, is something called watercolor pencils. And they're just basically pencils. You can use it to draw the things that you're going to paint or to add more detail. So right now, um, I have, when you work on wet on wet style, it's important to tape. So I, I cut my paper. I use nine nine by 12 paper for this like paintings. But usually if we're going to try something new, I always suggest that we experiment with it first. And um, because it's wet on wet, it's important to tape your paper down on a, a sheet, a cardboard backing sheet. So this is how it looks once you've worked on it. Um, you have that. And then um, what we're going to do first is, this is painter's tape. So it doesn't tear your paper when you take it off. So the first thing we're gonna do is draw a leaf. And I actually have one that's, um, where is my pre-drawn? I lost my pre-drawn leaf. But anyway, no problem. So I am going to, draw based on my, just if, if you imagine, for example, that I'm going to draw using my watercolor pencil, any color, like I'm picking an orange one here. So here's, here's my leaf. Um, I'm just going to make a quick rough drawing. With watercolor pencils, you don't really need much. There you go. Right. So what's nice about nature is there's no wrong or right way to draw it, right? So this is very, very uh, light. And a wonderful way to do this project is if you have a pressed leaf, just flatten it, press it, 
put it down on your paper and trace around it. That way you don't have to be afraid of um, drawing. So the first color to get this effect, the first color I'm going to lay down is yellow. So here are my paints. Before we start, another, oh, another important tip I like to say is when I work, plenty of paper towels and two tubs of water. One is for dirty water. This is where I clean my brush. And when I clean my brush, I always wipe it out on paper towels before, because the paper towel will tell me if my brush is clean or dirty. So for example, this brush, I will always clean it first. And when I wipe it off, when there is no paint left, then I know my brush is totally clean. Then I dip it into the water that I will use to create that pure color I need. And these watercolors, these are pan watercolors. Some of you may have tubes. So for the ones with tubes, you don't need to pre, uh, you, you just put them out, squeeze them out on your palette and then put water on your brush and mix and, and dilute them right there. But for the pans, you can put clean water right in there and then mix it like that. Don't be afraid to flood your pan with water. So I'm going to do this for all the colors I plan to use because it will prepare the water color depending on the brand because I know some student brands, they're harder than this. It takes more water and it takes more time. So another good technique for cleaning your brush is before you actually put it in your cleaning water, just take out the paint with your paper towel or one of the things I like doing is when I take out paint, I'm just going to brush it onto another sheet of paper and make a fun abstract out of that later. That's a different workshop. So anyway, I'm cleaning my brush. This is my dirty water pot. All right. And I just want to show you some. Okay, so yellow cleans off pretty nicely. So it doesn't matter. It's a, so I'm taking a clean brush right now. I'm taking a clean brush. I'm dipping it into my yellow and then I will copy the yellow veining in my leaf. So I do that. And again, we don't, we're copying nature. There is no right or wrong way to draw nature because nature in and of itself is random shapes, random, you know, lines. Um, as they said, there are no straight lines in nature. One of the things that I always tell students who will say, oh, I can't draw a straight line. Well, you don't need to draw a straight line. So that, that's not an excuse. So anyway, so here you go. I've got that. And we'll wait for this to dry. Um, sometimes I want to put a little green on my yellow veining. So I'm picking up some green from here. I didn't pre-moisten my other colors. Let me do that now. So pre-moistening the colors I plan to use, which is this bright green here, um, this red. So some people use a dropper. I don't have a dropper, so I'm just doing this. This is fine. A little bit of brown. I never use black because black is too strong of a color. I will show you how to mix dark colors with green and red. Um, so now here, here's my pan. Some of them are flooded. Some pans are flooded with water and for our project, you know, and this is my favorite thing. If you look at, at leaves in fall, you know they don't turn from green to whatever color, solid color they are at the end right away. The beautiful thing is they really go through different changes in, in, in like the, the color spreads from one side to the whole leaf. And that's what I like to capture in this painting. So now... We have our yellow veining in. I want to add a little green. So for now that you know how these two tubs of water work, I'm going to move them to the side so we really have more space for our 
um, you can see my watercolor right there and you can see my painting right here or at least you'll be able to see it right there. So I'm gonna pick up some of my green and where it's still rather wet, I'm going to just let it in so it does that. Spreading a little bit. Now I've allowed this to dry a little, should have been a little wetter, but that's fine. Overall, our leaf is gonna have a wet on wet approach. So that's fine for now. So this project can be done with some, um, this was done with a technique called uh, wax resist. What I did is after this yellow and green part was dried out, had dried, I traced the veining with a birthday candle, right? So this will provide a layer that protects the color underneath. It protected the yellow and uh, the green from getting layered on by any other color I was going to brush over it. So, but it's important to do that when this is dry. And one of the really nice hacks that, so you could either at this point, just go get a cup of tea, put it out in the sun, or one of the nice things, sorry, this doesn't plug, I like to do is I get my, Blow dryer, Woo! <laughs> which is tangled up in my lights right now. Let me just get that out of the way. And blow dry it. Oh, nice. Look at this. The green has already started to spread onto the, um, and I, my screen looks kind of fuzzy. It's not that. But you can see the green has softened. It's spread on the yellow, which is what is nice about wet on wet. But I'm going to blow dry it. Now here's a little bit of problem solving because I want this demonstration to finish really quickly. And the spots that were wet aren't drying as quickly as I want. So if you're ever in that situation, paper towel, you can always go in and pick up puddles of water that are forming in your work, no problem. So that will just help dry this thing in the next 30 seconds. But otherwise, if you have time, you can wait for it to dry naturally. I'm just going to take one more pass at it to make sure. So for purposes of demonstration, I'm going to do half of this with wax resist technique and the other half without wax resist, which means I'm just going to go around and do wet on wet painting on this side of the leaf. So this one, let's just, I'm, I'm just gonna write here. This side has, I'm going to put marks on mine because guess what? I can erase this marks. Watercolor is erasable. That's why it's a nice medium to learn. So I'm just going to do this side has wax. And this side has none. This is just for our reference so you can see what happens. So I'm going to take a little bit of little piece of wax. Some people have used crayon in the past. Um, some of my students use it and they say it doesn't didn't really work well. So the key with wax resist is you just have to remember that you've gone over the thing already because you don't want to miss something. So I'm going to put my, let me put this away a little bit. I'm gonna put it down and really go hard on it to protect that line of yellow. So 
So I'm just going to do wax resist until here. And then I'm not doing wax resist here. Put a little wax resist there. And sometimes you can put like, for this leaf, I'm going to put little white spots there just so we have some white showing through. There you go. So there you go. That should be enough wax. I'm always looking at my timer. Don't mind if it rings. It just gives me a timing to whether I should speed up or if I have more time. All right. So now we are ready for the next uh, part, which will be um, painting this actual leaf. Now, if you observe, this is not one solid color. These are different colors blending into each other. There's red, there's orange, there's greens in here. And the greens and the reds or greens and oranges actually create a very nice organic brown or dark color. And I will show you that uh, a little later. So here, like this one. Again, because I don't use black, I discourage the use of black. You are free to, I would encourage you to experiment with it though, so that you see what it does. So again, it's important to have our colors nice and liquid. So I get my clean water. I'm going to put some more drops in there for the colors I intend to use so that they're nice and ready for me. This is still good. Maybe a little bit of the purple there. Um, maybe a little bit of this dark green. There you go. So I have that. And I'm going to do the wax resist part first. And that's really the most fun. I like using a rather big brush. This is number 12. So for this size, this is a nice size to cover a big slab of area because one of the things that's important for wet on wet watercolor is we do not, what we do is wet on wet means that you wet your paper first. See this, you don't, you're not gonna see the water. You wet the paper first and then you put in your color. So I'm picking up some of this and then when I drop in the color, see what it does? It spreads on the paper. There's my timer. I'm just going to stop it for now. Um, I could start it again, just so I know. So see what it did. Um, I don't know why it doesn't focus as quickly. Sorry about that. <laughs> but wet on wet allows your, we do, so what we don't do in wet on, we, we don't do this. We don't stroke the color in like this. Because if you did, for example, um, so that you can see the water, let me, let me just let my camera sort of, I think it's confused because I keep um, putting things up and down. Um, let me see. How's this? Maybe I'll keep it at that. Is that good? It's, I, I guess it's clearer. At least it looks clearer to me. So wet, this is wet on wet. I'm going to put that down and I can see the water. When I put it, you drop the color in and let it spread instead of stroking again and again. We do not do this motion in wet on wet. You let the paint spread. So you sort of just dab things. So that's what I mean. So I'm going to wet this leaf a little bit. So I'm starting here. And you can see the wax resisting the water already. Then I'm coming in with my orange and dropping it in right there. And you can see the wax resist the paint that's on. There you go. And oh, I forgot. One of the things I like to do is I like, when I do this painting, I like putting spots of green first. So I mix a very nice, um, I'm just gonna use this, <laughs> very yellow, yellow green. There, very nice liquid yellow green. And then I'm going to put it down here. I'm wetting my paper very slightly again with a clean brush. I need a clean brush. Wet my paper here. Then I'm going to put my yellow green because I just like seeing how 
um, colors blend in the leaves. Or I'm going to put some up there too. I'm going to use this yellow green to wet the paper. There you go. So that is the wetness of my paper. And so when in wet on wet, don't judge your work right away. It will not look like what you have in mind because it comes together in places. So I put my yellow green down. I want another yellow green spot here actually with my leaves. So there you go. Then I'm going to go back, hit my oranges there, and just drop things in while the paper is, oh, did I wet my paper here? I don't know if I did, but I may have forgotten to wet my paper, but there you go. So I don't, I'm not, if you notice, I'm not stroking. I'm not doing this motion. I am just pressing the brush down gently and dabbing. There you go. And if you notice when orange and green mix, it gives you a nice brown. So there you go. So I can actually dab right over the wax that I created, that I put, but it stays. The yellow does not get painted over and does not mix with the green. So here we go. Now I want red on this part. So I'm picking up this red and making it a little bit more. You know, I didn't really clean my brush because it's orange is less bright than red. The red will overpower it. So there you go. I'm putting that nice bright red down there. Just dab, dab, dab. And you can see because it's hit the green, it's given me a nice brown. And all these leaves, so I can actually dab a little bit of this liquid red on top of the orange that's still wet and see it spread. This is already dry. So the thing with watercolor is you learn to work fast. And don't worry if you can't work fast in the beginning. It's, it's a skill you develop over time. But I am really like, if you can see how mottled it is now, that's it. So now I'm coming up to the part where there is no wax resist. And I want to show you what happens. When I... When I I, I'm going to pick up my color, right? A nice strong orange, lots of water. But when I go over the part without wax resist, the yellow disappears. So that's the difference. We lose that color. This has, oh, that still had wax resist. This one did not. So this has no wax resist. I'm going to stroke over it, gone. So there, these are just, so what we do here, if there is no wax resist, I'm going to use a slightly finer brush. I'm just making sure my brush is clean, clean water. And I'm going to wet with very pale orange paint, just so I can see where I'm putting my paint. I'm going to wet around it like that. So there's me wetting my paper. I'm going to leave, I'm going to try not to touch the yellow that I put down. So this technique's just a little bit more laborious, but it'll work too. And if I touch it, it's okay. So there, so I work section by section. Then now I can put fuller color Again, I've switched to a smaller brush. I will dab. So there you go. Just dab. Do not stroke. So you'll just have to pay more attention to where you're putting your paint. So this is a more impressionistic kind of thing because you're doing more dabbing than letting the color run into each other. So here you go. So you'll just have to be aware of leaving the, the spaces. So it's a little less free, but just as organic as the other one. This one, you'll get really soft edges. See how the yellow has actually, because the paints creep on the paper, the paint and water, the yellow has actually started to bleed into the red, uh, but that's fine. So that's just the nature of watercolor. So again, 
finer brush, less paint. I'm going to put water and I, I put the red on because I want to see where I'm putting my water. I don't want to put it on top of the yellow. There you go. I'm protecting the yellow veining that I see. So this is just slower. Um, so that's water, water, water. So before it dries, I put my color on and I dab. There you go. Then it, it'll spread where it will, but that's how you get color in. I think it's just a lot more work. That, oh, we forgot this part. So I'm going to put lots of water there. It's, I put a lot of orange because I want to paint it orange anyway. And I'm just steering clear of that yellow vein there. And then now when the paper's wet, I come in, I'm, I'm using the deep red with this one, a little bit more water. And then I'm dabbing, dab, there you go. And see how, see how it, see how it goes, let it run. So you can tilt your paper every which way. You get so many nice soft edges that way. Then I'm gonna dab over here, there. So, so the difference between the two techniques is you can be faster and freer with the wax resist, but you do have what are called hard edges in it. Um, with the no wax resist, you get softer edges everywhere. Uh, and it really will just depend on what you really like. So before this part of mine, before this part dries out on me, I'm going to go in with my strong reds and dab, let it spread. So different artists have different um, styles of using wet on wet. So this is the this is the character of wet on wet. It's a very flowy style. We do not move the paint ourselves. We allow the paint to move by itself on our painting. Um, so that's one. Now, you can see it's already started to bleed down into this, this spot, which is fine because that's the next spot we're painting. So I clean my brush. I just put water down. It doesn't matter. It's going to be red anyway. So part of the watercolor skill, I remind my students that will develop over time. It's not to be scared when your paint does something that looks uncontrollable. Because in truth, it's really not uncontrollable. You, as, as you keep practicing, you are learning how much water and pigment to put on your brush so that when the paint spread, you know what the outcome's gonna be. So in a sense, you are still controlling the outcome. But even if, the, the, even if it's the paint that's mixing itself, so here you go. So I'm just dabbing, letting it spread. So it will not spread so much into the yellow parts anymore because it's dry. Now I want to mix it into this part a little bit. Now this part, I put some wax resist on it earlier because it's on this side, right? So I'm going to show you the parts with wax resist. Look at what happens. I stroke over them and they just get spots of red, which is a very pretty thing sometimes. I'm gonna leave that, but this part without wax resist. Oh, I guess I, I put wax resist all over there, but, but it sort of loses the vein. See how that disappeared? So that's just it. And basically we have our autumn leaf. Now, now that you've laid down the basic color, um, we're going to add in little details now. So, so it depends. So this is, I'm happy with the color of this leaf. I may want to deepen some, uh, some of the colors. I may, I'm not, I don't feel the need to put any more brown because I want more of the reds to come out. Now, one of the interesting things to do with the, so oh, let's just put the, I'm just gonna suggest a stem. A stem is nice. I like putting green on my stems. So I will take this first and just put 
a, just draw the stem out with green. Oh, let me show you this too. If I put green color, this green on this red, that red area here, I'm going to get brown. So I can go in and dab a straight color green. And when the, when the paint spreads itself, you'll get green that becomes brown on the edges. And I think that's very pretty. Some people will like blow on the, on the paint to mix it. So I like this. It still has a bright green spot on it. So maybe I will put, I will put some greens. I'm, I'm deciding. So I hope what you can see is over time, one of the skills that students learn with watercolor is to decide what to do next. Because once you get faster in deciding what to do next, and that just comes with confidence and practice, you know, I mean, there's no other way you'll get that. Um, you can all take all the lessons you want, but if you don't really keep practicing, these, these techniques will still feel strange every time you try them. So what I'm just saying is, offhand, I'm decided, I want a little green up here. I, I, I really like the look. And, and, and again, it's really up to you, right? Nobody's saying that, oh, all the leaves you paint should have green in them. But I like those leaves that are half, in transition. So this has dried a little bit. I'm just going to layer on some green, very, very light liquidy green there. And it's a very subtle thing. Look at that. I'm going to put it in here. And we, it's all right to leave some white spots. And when I, like if there are white spots here, because this was the one with, without wax resist, if I stroke over that yellow area again, with a little water, it just softens the edge. It takes away the hard edge. So this one, if you look at it, that's considered a hard edge. I want you to see that. You can soften it by just putting some nice clean water on a, a fairly thin brush. This is a fairly thin brush with a nice point. Little water. And I'm just going to go over that edge with a little water, it'll soften it. Softness is one of those beautiful uh, characteristics of watercolor. So when it has slightly dried, just go over it again with a fine brush to soften edges. So this is how we will still get that different colored veining without using wax resist. For wax resist, you cannot soften the edges. So if you notice now, the wax resist one has more, um, more hard edges than the non-resist wax resist one. So there you go. So that's, that's the leaf. I'll, I'll, and then now I'm thinking, oh, this is too green for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take either a very clean brush. Let me get the clean dry brush. This, this brush is clean and dry. This is nice, a nice way to prove to yourself that your brush is clean. When you put it on a paper towel, there's no paint coming out. I'm just going to take this dry brush and I'm going to drink up. I just press it down. I do not rub. I do not stroke. I lift the color right out. See that? It drank up all that extra green paint that I decided, oh, it's too green now. Then I can just get my brush with a clean water. And, oh, is, is this clean? Aha, no, it's not. So that's why it's good to learn to use your paper towel. This is a very important tool in controlling pigment and water on your brush. So I know my brush is clean. I'm just going to dab a little water in there just to let the paint move again. So the paint again is sort of mixing itself on the paper. There you go. So one of the fun things you can do once you've gotten here, and, and again, I'm going to moisten this a little bit just for, is we're going to, to um, dab spots because some leaves, I wish I had my pressed leaves here. There's always a lot of spots in um, 
So we're almost done, right? My timer's gonna ring again, but this demonstration, as you can see, is clearly done. Um, this is a copy of real, see how many spots there are in these leaves. So we can, I've replicated that in our project, you can see. So while the paper is still slightly wet, take a medium size, take any brush. Actually, this is a nice size, a shape for it, I find. And make, makes a quite diluted amount of, this is too strong. Look at this. I'm going to show you what this does. Oh, let me just use another piece of paper. See how dark that is? We don't want it to be that dark. So, because it will look so fake. So I'm just going to clean this brush. See, the dark colors of the pan watercolor, they're very dark. We have to be careful. So I like mixing a more natural brown using green. This, I'll take this darker green and red. This is pretty dark, you're going to ask me, but it has more dimension. So that's still dark green. There you go. There you go. It's moving into the brownish brownish green area and it's got a little purple so I'm going to pick up a little bit of that but that's fine so another nice habit is just practice your color on another sheet of paper I says okay this is a this is a nice color it's not too dark it's, it's got good dimension to it so I'm just gonna take my painting. Technically, protect the parts that you don't want to have splatter in. But this kind of painting, I'm, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna splatter it. So you can see it's very fine. Better to start off fine first rather than having big, huge dots right, ooh, right there. So here, I'm gonna put a little bit more then because it didn't dot as much as I want. There you go, I'm getting it. Oop. Or sometimes you can take the sharp edge of your brush, this one right here, and very softly, very controlled. But the risk you run of this is your spots are going to spread much bigger than you want, but you could do that. So if you put it in a drier place, it'll stay. But if you put it in a wetter place, it'll spread. But it'll also dilute itself. So that's a nice way to put that. So I'm going to stop now and then just finish off the leaf. So I have, I've mixed a nice brown already. So I'm just going to use this brush on its edge and dab in a shadow area. You could stroke it, but this is a nice way of getting texture on the leaf. Then sometimes, oh, I think I'm just going to add some little bits of brown spots here and there. Oops, by just dabbing. I'm not, I am not, oops, I put it over my wax resist too, maybe. What? Now that was a little too dark, it's okay. I'll just go over it with, if I, f I make some, if I make a mark that I find too dark, I'm just going to go over it with some uh, wet, clean wet water. And then at the very edge, so, so this, this is also, oh, another thing I tell my students, watercolor is erasable. I love demonstrating this. So I'm going to get, again, clean brush. So this is clean, clean water. Lots of clean water on top. The sooner you do it, the more success you will have lifting the color right up. See how much, see how much water that is? It's flowing on the... Now, and then either you can just use your paper towel, clean one, this is slightly dirty, but that's okay. Press and lift. So there you will... I mean, what it's doing right now is it's just taking away the intensity, but at least it'll, because there was extra color I didn't want in the background, 
it'll help me. Um, it won't blend so much once I put the background color in, if I do. I mean, ideally, I, I like this just being white. So that's how you can erase with watercolor. And we're done. So again, it's just don't, just press and lift. So it didn't really erase things right now, but it took the color down so that once we put a, a background color on this, like, you know, I may choose to use blue or green uh, or some kind of green, um, it won't be as big of a detraction. So there you go. Thank you very much. I hope that was intriguing for you, but this, I like to call this a portrait of a leaf. And because I've already um, made several of these in class, can you imagine if you do this several times, even just for practice, and you have three of these, you could actually, even, I think it's gonna look really pretty framed, right? And hung together, or I could even frame this one upside down if I want, you know, I could even do that. Or you could, work on a bigger sheet of paper with leaves all going in a different direction. But this is a really fun style to explore the way wet on wet watercolor flows into each other. And a lot of the techniques that we used here are going to be usable in, um, paint, in landscape painting, like, like this one here. Um, or in making a dramatic kind of sky like that. Where am I? These are all from my class. I don't have my, maybe next time I will. Um, what I'll do is I will post on, on uh, maybe the library website for the next watercolor groups, maybe an examples of different kinds of uh, features like landscape, sky, flowers, um, grass that are done wet on wet style. So people can really, before coming to a workshop, you can see what I mean by colors moving into each other. But so there, we've done it. And I hope that for some of you who followed along, you, you have something that you had fun. And uh, I think, ooh, sorry, <laughs> I talked a lot. Uh, we can open the floor for questions now. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Joy. At this point, I am going to unmute everybody so they can ask questions. Hey, Joy. Uh, this is Yonghua. Thanks a lot for um, presenting this. Uh, so I got a question. I, well, I saw that when you mix the colors, you use the same brush, dip into the different color uh, plate. With, like for example, you dip in the green and then use the same brush, dip in the uh, the red one. Yes. Would that bring the green color into the red one? Yes, it does. Um, over time, you don't, because I, I can do that by, because I want to create a different color. So I was making brown. So I dip the mm -hmm. green, which is the, yeah. the brighter, less strong color. And then okay, I okay. took brush self. Mm. Like, so here I'm dipping in green. I dip yeah. it straight because uh, I'm going to mix them anyway, right? That's yeah. how I oh, see. There was I didn't pick up enough red, as a matter of fact. So uh -huh. that's what I'm using to make brown. That's okay. You don't have to worry about the green and the red mixing on your pan because you can clean that off if you need a clear red, a clean, bright red. So right now I wasn't working with the reds. So that's why I mix the darker colors later in the process. If you notice, we went mm. in first with water. So thank you. That was a very good question. With watercolor, the process is first lay down your brighter colors okay. because you want to preserve the cleanliness of your bright colors and then as and then so the next bright color was orange right mm -hmm. and then when you red now red itself is a very dark color if i were to want to do a plain red right now a pure red i'm going to this is a clean brush i'm going to dip 
it into my red into the area where I know there's likely less green paint left, I will still get a good red. And I'm going to show you right now where you are. Uh -huh. That's still red. So over time, see. you see artists doing this thing because it's fast. We really lose time and our paper dries out on us when we say green and then I'm going to clean my brush and then get the red and, and you know, all that. Also, uh, we, you learn how to keep half your palette uh, your paint pot dirty and how to keep the other pot uh, half clean. So there is a way around it. So if you looked at me, I just, because I just dip, I don't mix here. I, kids do this. I know this. <laughs> I teach kids classes. They'll mix, they'll get the green and do that. They'll they get the red and then do that. So that way you really dirty up your paint. But over time I've developed the skill just because I'm too lazy to have to keep washing my paints off, the, to dip here in the lower part with whatever color, I, I dip it there. I pick it up there. So, so even here, my brush has uh, my brush has red on it, strong color. I know it. I know it's strong. I I I'm, I want green, so I'm gonna pick it. Uh, put it here. There you go. And I'm mixing my brown. It did not. So so that's the beauty of working with with. Um, pan water colors. So I hope that's answered your question. Um, I got it. Thank you so much. I yes. talk so much, but I think I need to stop talking so other people can. <laughs> yeah. Please Thank you. Away. I love answering questions. So. Anybody else? Come on, you have to have um, Lynn, I, this is Lynn. Oh, hi, Lynn. Hi. Um, I really liked the class. I felt it was extremely informative and you didn't talk too much <laughs> because your talk supported what you did visually. Right. So I thought it was great. Um, I assume you give classes. Yes, Where's I do. your studio? Um, well, I have online classes, but the library ah. also does. I mean, before COVID, right, Jen, we also right. had online uh we had uh, live classes but so it depends on whether the library would would like to go back to offering classes under the library activities but i do okay. i do offer online classes so if anyone's interested do um you can email me uh jen has my email jen right you still have my email oh, it's Hi, jen everyone. There. Yes, yeah. right now, you know, um, probably we'll be holding Zoom presentations till the end of the year. Um, yeah. You know, even in rural areas, and I have friends in Virginia where the cases aren't as bad, you know, it's just, you know, a good practice, especially as soon as, you know, as soon as things get, tend to get better, something else comes up like, you know, the religious holidays, they say now the gatherings <laughs> are causing a spike, or maybe it's weddings in the fall, or... Okay. Flu season. Um, Flu season. So until the end yeah. of the year, uh, Zoom presentations will be our normal. Um, but certainly we'll, we'll have Joy back uh, maybe in about another month or so, maybe do something fun for the, the, the winter season. Yeah, yeah, um, holidays. When oh, that would be great. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like I, like I said, if, if anybody wants my email, you can get it from Jen. Uh, okay. Because so I'll call Jen. Jen, uh, can you send me her email, please? Yeah, Lynn. Um, you know, I tell you what. I'm. We're we're in the library on. Um, I'll tell you what. Here's a good thing to do. If you all know where to find your chat, I'm going to put my email address in the chat. Okay, uh, I don't know. So, you know, I've used this so much, but I don't get the chat part. It's yeah. in the top right, participants. Okay, I have mute, stop video. Oh, I see it. I see it. Wait a minute. Do it again. Oh, I just lost it. I know the things that we learn along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can just um, call. Um, I saw it, but I lost it. Something, Jay Schultz. Yep, Jay Schultz, and my last name is S-C-H-U-L-Z-E. 
There is no T in my last name. Okay. Hot W M L N J dot org. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. And if you want to, you know, I'm not at the we're at the library on uh, kind of weird shifts, but um, if you want to call the library at nine zero eight seven eight nine four zero nine zero and dial extension four one two two. That's my voicemail, and you can always leave a message. Just you know, sometimes there'll be a few days in between, so if you don't. Yeah answer back right away. I'm not ignoring you. It's just where we're <laughs> the library. I get it. I but get it. Thank you. 4122. I will be happy to reply. Super. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So well, thank you for coming. I, I said this is, it's, 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 it's an alternative and we're thrilled to at least to offer the alternative for everybody. Yes. and it, it, Lovely. It, it's nice. It gives everyone a chance to explore something new and we're all finding out through, eventually we learn how to use Zoom. So it really just, it's, it's awkward in the beginning and, but, you know, a few more practice, you know, times of doing it, we all get the hang of it. So I hope that the next time, um, oh, sorry, does someone have a question? I'm so, talking too much again. Yes, Libby. Well, Will this lesson be available? As, is, is it recorded and available that we could see it again? Um, I guess we should be able to, we, we should be posting this. Um, probably not the Q&A session, that gets a little bit uh, back and forth. But yeah, I, I did record this session and we can okay. post it on our Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. Because ah. this is important. So I'm glad that you're eager to try it again. Um, I, like I said, in all my class, in all my workshops, if you, you know, you do it once, you just, you're just absorbing things, but you just, if you do it again and again, that's when your hand and your eye learn what the theory really means. Um, and as you saw, watercolor is actually